Okay, so the article begins with a description of what's going on, what you could be doing, and also a description of what you can see. It says, bright and early, you start preparing for your hike up Sigiriya, or Lion Rock. So that's the place we're going to be visiting, and it's going to be a bit of a walk. What else do we know about it? Right. The article tells us this UNESCO World Heritage Site is an ancient fortress in Sri Lanka. That acronym UNESCO is for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And it's an organization that's part of the UN and finds places around the world that it thinks are really special to designate, to say are World Heritage Sites. And this place we're looking at today is one of them. Yeah, it kind of means they'll get a bit of extra protection, some right. funding. They'll be mentioned in various guidebooks and things right. like that. Now, this one's a fortress. Right, and that word fortress is a noun that means a building meant to protect people inside it from attack. A fortress usually has high, strong walls and is often put somewhere that's high up so the people in it can see a long way and anyone attacking has to walk uphill. An example might be, the king's fortress was built on a hill near the city. People thought it was impossible to attack. So we're thinking something kind of similar to a castle, really. Right. A castle is a kind of fortress. Okay. Usually we say castle when it's a fortress where a king lives, or a queen. There we go. So what else do we know about Lion Rock? It says, Built into a 200 meter tall rock, so super high, mm -hmm. it's surrounded by gardens and fountains. So a fountain is generally a man-made water feature in which water is shot or at least kind of gently pushed into the air by pumps. Now you can get natural fountains, they do exist, but man-made ones are more common and commonly seen in parks, in gardens, in public squares and so on. So we could say in the city centre there is a large fountain. Many people throw coins in it because they believe doing so is good luck. That's right. The article says, before you climb, you wander through them, admiring their beauty. So before you start climbing, you sort of walk through these gardens and think about how nice they are. And that word wander is a verb that means to walk or move around slowly without trying to get somewhere in a hurry. People often wander around a park or a city if they want to take their time looking around but aren't going anywhere in particular. An example of how we use this might be when I get to a new city, I like to wander around near my hotel and see what it's like. Okay, so let's get back to the article. We're exploring Lion Rock and we're, remember, this is on a 200 meter tall rock. You're going to have to hike up there. And as the article says, on your way up, a guide introduces the fortress's history. So of course he'll tell you or she'll tell you all about what's this, how old is this, right. what's this from, what famous stuff happened here, and we've got an example of that in our next sentence. That's right. You pass by beautiful frescoes while learning about Kashyapa, a 5th century king who built his palace and fortress on Siguria. A fresco is a kind of painting. It's a painting done on a wall or ceiling so that the art becomes part of the wall instead of being painted on something else and hanging from the wall. Frescoes as an art form are thousands of years old, and some of those ancient artworks still survive today. So I always think a lot of these frescoes, they often seem to show in these places like the history right. of stuff that's going on, right? You know, the kings and their adventures, the battles, the sort of big pictures of what life was like. So this guy, Kashyapa, he builds this fortress, which right. we've already looked at, and he kind of makes it a palace. Now the word palace is a noun, and it's a large and beautiful building, or a set of buildings, that serves as the residence of the royal family. Some palaces around the world are now museums, or are lived in by non-royalty. Now palaces can also be used by other very important people, such as popes and archbishops, uh, archbishops, very important religious people. 
And sometimes even just other very important landowners, nobles might also live in a palace. But generally, we associate the word palace with kings and queens and so on. So here's an example from my home country. Buckingham Palace in London has been one of the residences of the king or queen of the UK since the time of Queen Victoria. That was when it was sort of built into a palace and that was when it became the big sort of centerpiece of the British royal family. Right. And even in other places, like in America, you might see some place that's called a palace. Mm. Now, since in America we don't have kings or queens, it doesn't mean that a king or queen lives there. We're just trying to say it's a really nice building. The article goes on to say, as you rest on Siguria's western plateau, you learn about Kashyapa's demise. A plateau is a high, flat area of land. A plateau is like a plain that's above the level of the land around it. Maybe the most famous one in the world is the Tibetan Plateau, a mostly flat area near the Himalayan mountains in Central Asia. That's four and a half kilometers high. Oh. That makes the whole area taller than Jade Mountain, Yushan, in Taiwan. The plateau the article is talking about isn't as big as that one, but it's a big flat area of land that's high up. Okay, and as you sort of walk up there, you'll see and hear some of the story about Kashyapa's demise. Now, when we use the word demise, this is a noun, we mean the end of something, and most often we take it to mean a person's death. We could talk about the demise of an empire or the demise of a business, which is the failure of the business or organization. But the most common meaning of a demise, and when we talk about someone's demise, we mean their death. So maybe he was beaten in a battle or he was killed right. by some traitor or, you know, whatever, some mystery happened to him. What do we learn about Kashyapa's demise? Right, we find out. The article tells us Magalana the king's brother, defeated Kashyapa in a battle for the kingdom. His own brother? Right. Oh, Very dramatic. Classic story. Yeah. And that word defeat is a verb that means to win a fight. In this case, we're talking about a war between two brothers for control of their kingdom. One brother defeated the other. An example might be, the fighter defeated many opponents on her way to become the world champion. Okay, so that's what sort of happened at the start. We got Kashyapa builds this place. Right. His brother takes it from him in a big kind of civil war and right. fight and so on. So what then? Well, we see in the article that Sigiriya then became a Buddhist monastery and remained one until it was deserted in the 14th century. So a monastery is a place where monks live and work, and they're generally separated from the outside world. Right. Now, this is a Buddhist monastery, so the monks in there, they follow the teachings of the Buddha. But around the world, you see other types of monasteries as well. Right. Um, some of them used to be monasteries, and they're now something else. We've got a lot of those in England, and throughout Europe, you will see and hear about these places. In Asia, it's more likely to be a Buddhist monastery. Right. The article tells us, Keeping this in mind, you make your way through two giant lion paws that lead you to the top. Let's take a closer look at that phrase, to keep something in mind. To keep something in mind is to remember or think about something while you're doing something else. We use this phrase when we want to make sure that someone doesn't forget something. Keep that in mind, we might say. In this case, we're being asked to keep in mind that the site was once a Buddhist monastery and to behave with the right amount of respect while we're visiting. And as you go up, you see these two big lion's paws. Yeah, right. it's pretty cool. Of course, this place is called Lion Rock. Maybe at one time actual lions lived up there, but the lion is a very important animal in Sri Lanka. It's actually on their flag, right. so it's no surprise that they've got some big lion stuff here and there. Here, we're talking about lion's paws. A paw is the foot of an animal that has claws and kind of flat, hairless pads on the bottom. Animals with paws include things like dogs, cats, wolves, bears, lions, of course, and so on. 
Here's an example sentence. My cat will sometimes raise its paw in the air like it wants to give me a high five. <laughs> okay. The article tells us about those paws. They're all that's left of the huge lion statue Siguria is named after. Ah, that's why. That's why it's Lion Rock. Right. Big lion statue. Statue is a noun that means the shape of a person, animal, or thing made out of stone, wood, or metal. Statues are art and are at least the same size as the real thing, but often much larger. In the case of Siguria, the lion statue that used to be there must have been the size of a building because each of its paws is the size of this room. If a statue is smaller than the real thing was, like maybe small enough to fit on a desk or table, then we call it a statuette. An example might be, there are several statues of famous people from history in this park. So it's kind of a shame that the, that full lion statue isn't right. there, right? It would have how, been really impressive. Yeah, how amazing would that be to actually see, you know, a, a hundred foot tall lion right. just kind of sitting there. Taiwan of course has some really big statues. It's one of the things that I like about being here. The big sort of Buddha statues you right. see, the big god statues like the, the ones in uh, Lotus Lake down in Zoying around Kaohsiung. And I've seen a really couple of really big uh, Guanggong statues in right. Taichung as well. I find those kind of big statues really cool. England doesn't have huge statues, not in the same not way. Not as much for the, the yeah. really massive ones. Yeah, no. you've got the Statue of Liberty, right. you've kind of got Mount Rushmore, which is like a statue. The UK doesn't quite have anything that big, so I feel we're missing out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've climbed past the lion paws. We now see that reaching the top, you drink in the beauty of the landscape below. So you're sort of looking around going, oh wow, look at all that spectacular countryside, look at all the things I can see up here. And the article finishes by saying, you feel that it's not too much to say that Siguria is one of the world's most amazing wonders. So we, we say it's not too much to say, we mean it's not a lie, it's not an exaggeration. Like, Actually, that's a pretty honest and a pretty fair way to say it. Like, this is one of the amazing wonders of the world. Now, in that phrase or in that sentence, we talked about drinking in the beauty of the landscape. The phrase drink in is today's shortcut for you phrase. So let's watch our video to find out what it means and how we can use it. Now that last sentence also brought us to the end of the article, so when we come back we will be discussing today's For You Chat question.